Hi, sir. That's how you missed the bus back there. Are you going north? Because I could give you a ride. I don't trust no lifts or boobers. Oh, I'm not a lift. I mean, I, I drive for lift, but not right now. I just wanted to help. OK, but don't try nothing. I don't hit ladies, but I'll slap a bitch to defend myself. Welcome back to Insecurity, the official recap podcast for HBO's Insecure. I'm Crystal. And I'm Hey Friend. Hey, brr, 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 brr. Girl, in episode six, we are low key done. Oh my God, only four left. That's crazy. A girl, yes. And also low key the fuck over it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this was absolutely the episode that had me laughing out loud the most. Really? I mean, screaming, laughing, sis. Girl, listen. <laughs> It was a, it was a calmer many... pace, but I can definitely guess which parts had you dying. Exactly. I'm sure you can because you know <laughs> me. You know where I'm from. You know my people. But <laughs> we open up the episode. It is the day after the block party. And Molly's words to Issa are just swirling nonstop in her mind about how Issa needs to quit taking advantage of people. Quit using them. Bitch, you always need help. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, and this, this part was relatable because... Whenever I get into some kind of confrontation, I hate confrontation to begin with. Mm -hmm. But when it yes. happens, I will replay the conversation over and over and over mm -hmm. like a broken record, which is partially why I hate that <laughs> dynamic right. to begin with. Yeah, uh, it's real, though, because it's just like, ugh, it, like you can see that Issa is struggling with everything that happened last yeah. night. Yeah. I love that right here we get Pip Millet's um, Something About the Rain, which is just such a beautiful song and absolutely perfect for the moment. These soundtracks. And, you know, let's just <laughs> let's just have a let's just have another moment. I know we give thanks almost every episode, but the music on this show. The music is phenomenal. Bro. It's phenomenal. Like second to none. Perfect song choices. And like you were saying before, the fact that they update the playlist every week with the new songs that were on that episode yes 14 Ugh. hours of songs okay give me all of it i'm about <laughs> to vibe out bitch <laughs> <laughs> so of course Issa's checking facebook and the events page but the comments are really overwhelmingly positive people had a really good time surprisingly They're happy considering about it's it facebook Yes, and what is also surprising is that old girl got her YouTube channel up. Uh-oh, Shannon on the scene, Crystal, get it right. And being a bitch, talking about, last night, niggas gathered for fried chicken, cocoa butter, and violence. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> Which is not what happened at all. Man, who needs white people when you have black people like Sharon? Leave it like, to the media. Gotta, why you gotta act like this, sis? <laughs> but... She clicks on over to the next app, checking her voicemail. She gets one from Amal. And I love that we see Amal's, you know, boo or flavor for the moment. We don't know what he is. I love I the little hand flick up. where he was like, like don't sh come this way. Important right. things. For you coming here talking about something stupid. And he brings up the point that Issa didn't invite their mom. And, you know, my mama would probably not be into a block party. So I wouldn't have invited her either. But but you know how it is like me. I just need the invitation. Don't mean I'm going to come. <laughs> that is the Taurus in you, friend. You know? How dare you not even invite me knowing that I won't come. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you no. <laughs> yeah. And that's not the only one. She's got voicemails from Koya. One from Kelly, who is babysitting that child. <laughs> that last night what happened with y'all okay this baby won't stop crying why are you reaching for my teddy ain't nothing in there the point here is that she did not get a text message or comment or voicemail from molly no at all. the one she nope. was clearly looking for yes clearly so Woo, I can tell this episode is going to be dealing with the aftermath. And I'm like, let's see how Issa handles it, man. I'm not so. ready for it. But before you move on, can I just say that I really love that we got to see Amal so much more this season. I love his dynamic yes. with Issa. I love that sibling dynamic and just the advice, how grounding he is. I hope we see more of him. Yes, more Amal. I love him. And watching him and Issa together is just so good. <laughs> it's phenomenal. So Issa is brushing her teeth and having a conversation with Mira, bitch, who for once is not dragging my girl over the fucking coals. Because <laughs> normally, normally Mira, bitch, gets Issa together. But she's like, nah, bitch, don't forget. Molly was wrong, too. <laughs> and you always the first one to reach out. So fuck that. What was it? <laughs> she gave some line and was like, oh, bars. And she <laughs> <laughs> I was God, surprised I when she bitch. told her. 
to relax. Re- what did you say? Relax, relate, and release. Relate and release. I was like, yes, okay. Bitch, self-care. Self-care you bars. Right, bitch. I, 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 I just didn't hear you. I know what self-care Sunday mean, <laughs> bitch. I read as well. But... <laughs> I love that when Issa got this advice to take care of herself, she turned right around and cleaned up her apartment, which is such an overlooked part of self care. Like normally so people true. think of bath bombs, baths, yeah, and, yeah, and buying whatever you want at Sephora. But. It's true, but don't forget about the physiological needs. Just the simplest thing, like did you yeah. change your bed sheets so you can get fresher sleep? Don't forget mm-hmm. the pillowcases. Did you take a shower? Did you take Is a shower? A good yeah. shower, right? And like right. you said, the fridge too. Clean that out. Throw out the old oh, yeah. ketchup. She went all up in there, like cleaned out the shelves and a recalibration. Yes. So good. It, and you just feel better when your home is clean and everything is in order. Legit. So. Issa's feeling great right now, and she gets a call from Nathan, who is edging up a kid with purple hair. I said, Oh, this is our friend Asante. <laughs> this is absolutely. <laughs> Asante son with this purple hair and checking himself out like yeah I'm clean <laughs> <laughs> oh man yes yeah. so Issa apologizes for dragging Nathan into the bullshit and Molly's words are clearly still really getting to her because right. she makes sure to tell Nathan that she doesn't want him to feel like he was used in this situation but Nathan is great projecting right. totally projecting because he was like I'm good like be proud girl it was tight yeah like you wanted help i wanted to help and you know just focus on the fact that last night was incredible because you should be really proud of it so i'm like damn this is a friend too bad molly can't do none of this i'm telling you crystal i he confuses me he's such a mind fuck because i'm holding two complete different thoughts about him correct he ghosted her so it's like frustrating but then he's so grounding and supportive he looked out for her with this block party so it's like i don't know how to feel And I'm starting to think that some of Issa's issue with him is coming away because first of all, you know, he has, he is, I would say he has made up for the ghosting situation, especially since he did come back. You're right. I would say he has compensated for that. But also the fact that Molly was the reason that they didn't get to have that conversation on her birthday. And she's feeling so stank about Mm -hmm. Molly right now might have a lot to do with why she's like yeah i'm more open to this because fuck molly right (laughs) that bitch can't tell me who's good for my life and who's not (laughs) and molly's rigidity how she's always so judgy you know sometimes when you don't tell your judgy friend some shit it's easier to move (laughs) god i and you know what i hate to say i used to be that judgy friend Mm. and i mean all of us are to to varying degrees well i mean yes but it wasn't judgy in a helpful way it was more like people don't even tell you when they need something because because they already know you're gonna make them feel bad be, right <laughs> it's the virgo like, well you hoes know that you come to me for the truth the rest <laughs> of these bitches might lie but you come to me when you need to know what the fuck is up but there's a way to talk to people <laughs> right you know, you're there's right a balance in everything virgos <laughs> talking to us <laughs> but you know nathan's being super cool about everything he has one he really more client is. to take care of yeah but he's gonna call her back later and i love that ending conversation with his um co-worker about oh the hair girl sandwich. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you gonna eat yours yes because it's mine <laughs> oh okay yeah that makes sense <laughs> i love like, insecure in these random funny ass scenes what you mean it's a hair in your sa- bitch go back up to subway and exchange it there fuck is you talking to me for <laughs> low key i don't think there was a hair in his sandwich he just wanted two of them nick exactly he just wanted two sandwiches <laughs> but anyway <laughs> i noticed in this next scene that Issa is back at the ghetto grocery store for the rest of us okay <laughs> not that nice ass big ass metroplex that molly was getting her <laughs> avocados in okay broke bitches don't shop there they shop in the fucking hood <laughs> i'm dead i love it but there's a pregnant woman walking up and down the aisle asking people for help with her purchases dude and she is everyone was ignoring her ignoring her or you know saying no or just dismissing her like not even looking in her direction and i, I didn't really understand felt that for her. no i didn't get that i don't know we live in new york where it happens regularly you did, you did not understand that because because it just seems so terrible but then i was saying how i think maybe she's like the neighborhood scammer who everybody knows and they're like they see her ass every week like bitch like, oh my please. god please. not this week girl not this week please <laughs> you know Shantae, every neighborhood has not that doing this yeah <laughs> 
girl, that's not even a real baby bump. It's Take a that pillow. Shit out. With us. Take that pillow out. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Issa, who has just been reminded by Nathan that sometimes all you need is a friend or some help. Right. You're right. That Paying it forward to, too. Yeah, she's gonna pay it forward. She's feeling, you know, super grateful right now. So she decides to help this lady out. Um, but unfortunately, when she adds the <laughs> items to her purchase, the car declines twice. And I love this <laughs> cashier because I have been a cashier many times before. <laughs> and at a certain point, you want to tell people it's not the machine. Don't give I don't me another card. Check the cord. Don't yeah, give me I another don't card. To, I don't need to double check the, the receipt paper or nothing. It's not. Let's not do this. <laughs> Let's just not. And I love that old girl was like, wow, this just got sad. This is sad. <laughs> the audacity. <laughs> when I tell you, girl, laughing through the whole thing, she said, the gift you've given me today is perspective. Like, damn, I may be begging. And then for say, help God with my bless. Baby, but Ooh, I'm my not God. You. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh and my I have God. to say, Issa, I don't even know, like, girl. <laughs> You could have you could have just been real with yourself about that. You know you ain't just got one hundred and sixty dollars to be covering. What the hell was that girl buying? All I saw was some well, diapers. Girl, okay, see, I can tell you don't have no kids and you. But don't it was work only like retail. one little thing. Yeah, it was diapers, but I think bucks. she had. But I think she had formula too, and it was some other stuff. Oh, and that okay. Baby stuff is a lot got more expensive. Got you. I didn't than catch that. I literally just saw the one pack yeah. of diapers. I was like, "Well, what the hell is this? The gentrifier, Plus, you know, the gentrifier <laughs> grocery store." Well, the gallon of wine is probably thirty something dollars by itself. True. So I see how they got to one fifty seven, but <laughs> Issa was like, "She ain't need all that shit no way." Baby, she said, "Damn, yet. what the fuck? Expensive ass <laughs> energy." <laughs> Fuck paying them forward, y'all. Girl, you knew all you had was thirty five dollars for that wine. Quit fucking playing. So <laughs> she is driving down the street when she sees an older man chasing down the bus. He doesn't catch it, and so you know, still feeling the goodwill, even though it didn't really work out the last time. She pulls over, and even though Mira bitch is like, "Oh my god, here this stupid bitch go," she's like, ah, "I'm doing it." No way. Oh. First of all, hell no. No, girl. I'm not I doing love that. being a good Samaritan. But there are boundaries, okay? You do not <laughs> pick on, up girl. people that miss the bus on the street. I would just be too scared as a single woman to pick up a man. Yeah. Of any race Period. Or I don't care else, who it right? is. No strangers any in my man, car. I'm probably just not going to invite you to my car. But he also immediately reminded me of my old ass uncles because he was like, I don't do lifts or boobas. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what do you say? I don't hit women. <laughs> I do not hit women, but I will slap a bitch if I have to defend myself. And when Mary bitch was like, see. <laughs> <laughs> not Mary bitch she slapped slapping. herself and pointed at Issa like, that's going to be you, bitch. <laughs> I, friend, I had to pause the fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> this episode, bro. It's too funny. And then, of course, once George, who is this old cantankerous man, once Child. he gets in the car, he will not tell her where he's going because he don't want her to put the address in the fucking phone so that the government will see it. I when said, oh, he no. said, you just want me to give it to you, so you put it on the phone and the phone give it to the government. <laughs> I mean, he did not lie, but... <laughs> It's but what makes you think the government really gives a fuck about you, sir? Like, yes, the government can access your info. They but need who to are know you? where George is. <laughs> <laughs> Just go up La Brea. If you go give a nigga help, then help the nigga. Okay. <laughs> I love that when she pulled off, we saw that looking for Latoya um, ad on the bus bench. Oh, you're so good. I didn't even catch My that. My fave. Oh, Latoya, where you at, sis? So. <laughs> Anyway, they're in the car and George is immediately complaining. Like as soon as he gets in, he's like, damn, you a lizard? It's so cold. And then she changes it. Literally. Two, two seconds, quicks, bro. And all of a sudden it's too hot. <laughs> but then when he asks her to split the difference and it goes back down one and she's like, is that good enough? He's like, give me a minute. Let me like, feel you it. Need, you didn't need to feel it. <laughs> <laughs> this is everybody's fucking uncle. <laughs> George is one of my favorite parts of this episode. He had me screaming. He's talking to Issa about how, you know, you got to be careful because there's a lot of crazy people out there. And Issa looking like, yeah, and one of them is in my fucking passenger Listen, seat. okay. <laughs> screaming out, watch out. <laughs> and then when Issa's like, what is it? Oh, I'm in, in life. You got to watch out. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the point where I've been like, sir, it's time you get the fuck out my car. 
Okay, and mine was coming right up after that because when he called her a feminazi because she said she didn't have a man. <laughs> and asked if she had a man to take care of her. What is going Looking on, out for you. Do you have a man to look out for you? <laughs> oh, so you wanted them feminazis. Oh, we equal. It's like, <laughs> I could just be single. I could just be single. Why does it have to be? And why Nazi? Believing women are equal to men is a Nazi status? And oh. sir, you could just go wait for the bus. <laughs> so, Yes. <laughs> Don't forget that, okay, girl. Mira bitch tried to tell your dumb ass, but he also asked her if she had ever heard of Black Planet. And I'm thinking this old nigga was old Black Planet. I know. No, I was he like, was what not. was your screen name? <laughs> no, child. He talking about the club. It used to be right up here on the corner, and that's where him and his homeboys would go take the train. Okay, not Amtrak. <laughs> okay, if you picking up what I'm putting down, I said, oh <laughs> no, he would have to get out my car. <laughs> He you know Mary bitch was like, I told your ass. I told, I told the stupid y'all. bitch. I told her. <laughs> and, but I do love that at this point in the conversation, George is talking about how, you know, his friends got into different bullshit, crack and, you know, various <laughs> crimes, things like that. And he says that he should have seen the signs that the shit wouldn't last because there's always a sign. And I thought, damn. Message. How appropriate for Issa's life right now. <laughs> and I love that, how it's true. You will get a message from a stranger, from a song, from a billboard, exactly Listen. what you need affirming you. And in hindsight, you'd be like, how I didn't see that shit the first time around? Never fails. <laughs> Never Fuck fails. Fuck was I on, right. But when Issa asked if there's a sign that they're getting close to this nigga's destination. <laughs> <laughs> he got to pee all, all of, of a sudden. sudden. He has to pee so bad. Mm-hmm. She's pulling into the parking lot like, oh God, please, because you're not peeing in my car and he's not peeing in his hat. So. Also, <laughs> what? <laughs> what and and while he's gone mirror bitch is like what what is this <laughs> bitch let's go nobody Fuck will know pull off <laughs> pull off but you know Issa is just dead set on being the world's helper today and she just knows that this man needs her and when he comes back out with that fun dip and starts hollering at charles <laughs> he i don't i low-key don't think he had to pee i think he just wanted a snack for the road yeah, I think he just wanted the fun dip. He knew they was coming by the way. For real. Him, so he was like, oh, he let was me like, go this in is there. a long ride. <laughs> 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 let me get a snack. It's just like, what I'm not going to do is sit here with you while you try to figure out whether that's your homeboy across the street. I'm not going to do that. Not him so. yelling at Charles. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm going to call you later, nigga. That better not be you. What? <laughs> Issa has somewhere to go though so nigga you need to wrap it up and when she asked him where they going he's like where you think <laughs> back up La Brea like, <laughs> like I've been told you three times stop asking <laughs> detective so you know we don't know for how many miles Issa was on La Brea but eventually she pulls up to a house and George pulls out a photo from his pocket of the house on the street Yeah, he's like you know Yep, this is a spot. You know, thank you, Isa. Appreciate it. Isa, like, bro. How, how Wait, when that? he pulled out the picture, what did you think was happening in that moment? Well, at first, I don't know. I guess I was, I guess in my heart, I thought it had something to do with a woman. Mm. Like he was going back to, <laughs> I don't know, his wife that he left 10 years ago or his mama or something. I was not ready for his son to answer the door and be like, Dad. <laughs> I was not ready for I that I don't think all. his son like, was ready either. Because <laughs> now I have a lot of questions. Why do you have a picture of your son's house? I'm Why so the- curious. I know the insecure ties in random little stories like that. But what if the there's time. a dot somewhere? I'm like, whose dad is this? Oh, my God. I just got a vision. What is it? It's about to be wrong. It's about to be wrong. But Latoya is in that house. Oh, my God. <laughs> and Andrew. That's Andrew's dad. That is Andrew's dad. dad. Friend, friend. It was bad <laughs> enough. It was bad enough. Now you making it worse, girl. <laughs> Latoya is his sister. No, ma'am. But anyway, Issa takes it <laughs> at the clock. She's clearly running late for something. And we see that she's pulling up at a paint and sip. Hey. My fave. I love paint and sips. And I love that she went alone. I was waiting to see if some naked man was going to pull up. Because, you know, they get oh, a little Lord. rowdy in certain cities. They do. They do. But thankfully, there is a free spot open next to three black girls. You know, Kyla Pratt's getting married. Hey, so. Kyla. I was kind of amazed that Issa went by herself. I don't, you know me. I'm like, I'm not shy, but yeah. you get too much attention when you roll up to events by yourself because everybody's like, why are you alone, girl? 
But I really think most of that is in your head. It Especially probably is. People cities. aren't thinking about you as much as you no, think they are. Not. But they're still, thinking about themselves. It's overwhelming, <laughs> even in my head. And also, who cares what you think about me? I paid on my Groupon, and I'm doing my fucking payment <laughs> with with. Don't forget the gallon of wine that she brought. <laughs> <laughs> and thankfully she did buy the gallon because the girls do not have no wine or anything at all they thought the sip was provided it never is don't ever girl that. but you know they right. look like they don't get out much maybe some out of towners clearly oh lord here go friend. as we you know, see when people grow up in new york they're like oh where are you from where are you see? from oh, what city what a quaint little town do you guys have events <laughs> <laughs> do they have pavement where you're from <laughs> <laughs> So the girls are visiting from D.C. and it's clear that these three have been through a lot. But when it comes down to it, they always going to have each other's backs. I said, look at me and Fran and Jade. Come on. Except <laughs> minus the brother fucking yeah, part. Yeah, never slept with anybody. No, sibling. not my Don't zhuzh. know how y'all bounce back from that, Dina. But, you know. <laughs> I just love the vibe between these three. Issa is clearly getting along great with them. I love that they tease each other, but then also like when the white um, instructor comes through and starts talking about somebody struggling. Oh, they shut that down. We make fun of each other. You, you don't. You can't do that, bitch. She's a fucking artist, bitch. Respect the vision. (laughs) You just don't know my friend. You just not on our fucking wavelength. Open your third eye, (laughs) stupid bitch. Buzz, buzz, okay. (laughs) Listen, even though those those the cacti are clearly dicks but it don't matter <laughs> it would be a masterpiece if we was painting dicks friend and that's a real <laughs> friend <laughs> holy shit yeah so they're all having a good time um but on the way out after the event Issa gets a text from kelly asking her to call her back if you remember earlier in the episode she had a voicemail from kelly being right. like bitch what the fuck happened last night right. so Issa's clearly not gotten around to that. Kenzie, one of the girls that she just met, said that, you know, they're about to go to the bar on the corner and invites Issa to tag along. And Mira, bitch, who is really now a reflection bitch, is like motioning to Issa like, yeah, bitch, let's go. Which was oh, cute. Like, She's like, come is. on. Being supportive. And I love that, yeah, once they get there, the good times keep rolling. We hear Dina's absolutely absurd proposal story. Which I, I hated. I wish somebody yes. would tell me I'm addicted to you and feign a overdose. What? Right. I'm actually going to have to leave you. That's traumatizing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but eventually they start asking more about Issa and she's kind of struggling initially to really describe what she does for a living. Right. You know, somewhere between a marketer and event planner, she settles on cultural curator. I and like the girls that are though. Super impressed. How yeah. it kind of just came oh, to her in the moment. Everything's exciting. Please share. <laughs> <laughs> well, I create events and support local artists and businesses in South LA. So you're like a marketing, or like an event planner. It's a little of both. I bring people together and expose them to unique places and experiences. If I had to put a title on it, I guess I'd say I'm a cultural curator. Damn, bitch, that sounds cool as fuck. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I just did an event with Vince Staples. Yeah, like stuff like that, but like chill though. Oh, damn, Vince Staples? Y'all need to stop gassing me up. (laughs) Please, I'm about to gas you up and light you on fire, bitch, that's bum. (laughs) Thank you. So you're basically the plug. Yeah, the girls are really it. gassing her up right now and i'm thinking damn this is probably what she was missing from her interactions with molly and tiffany and kelly because affirming yeah, right because even kelly was like bitch i don't know what you do i literally i was like what is the purpose and why and what for and, and why and tiffany and is like, busy in her own thing and molly's clearly having issues so right this is nice exactly. her friend these new friends are definitely making mm-hmm. her feel good in that moment which was nice yeah, it's nice to feel supported. And she even starts bragging herself a little bit, being like, oh, you know, I work with Vince Staples. But okay, sure, <laughs> something light, <laughs> something light for the weekend. <laughs> okay, like, okay, girl, you definitely name dropped right now, which is <laughs> mm, so coastal. But <laughs> when Kenzie excuses herself to go to the restroom, Issa tags along too. And Kenzie's asking her about, you know, where are all the niggas hiding it. And Issa starts breaking it down. And I was like, well, listen, let me take some fucking notes. Where did I you did. <clears throat> The rich niggas was in Ladera Heights. Okay. I made sure to Copy. take note of where the hood, the rich, the <laughs> zesty, and the earthy were. Because, you know, yes. that's my judge. Fran needs the earthy ones. I need she a little wall of it. Yeah, I'm going to be driving she around. Needs- <laughs> <laughs> she needs your natural deodorant to be wearing off right about now. 
and a couple <laughs> felonies, maybe just two. And don't forget, married niggas are in the Dinas. They're all the Dinas. If it ain't in Dina, that's where the married nigga is at. But when she, when she says that, Kenzie doesn't respond. And so, of course, she looks under the door and that bitch is gone. What no the fuck, though? Nothing. I was like, huh? Did yes. she float? <laughs> I was just, she was like, bitch, did you fall in? But no, she did not fall in. Them bitches pulled a fucking dine and dash on her ass i and can't not the they, scavenger not the la right. scavenger hunt what is not that? the fucking bachelorette scavenger hunt where you get double points if you combine activities so they get to be where did they the print stranger. that out of i just want to know so a heartless bitch magazine because how you don't <laughs> pretend to be somebody's friend like to me that was the worst part like yeah you stuck me with the bill which i'm gonna beat your ass but how are you going to fuck with my emotions like that and act like and Issa was really... hella cool with them. Like they had exactly. genuinely have fun at the paint and sip and then, you know, chilling here, having conversations. What happened? She shared her fucking cheap ass wine with them and everything. So how did she I pay for that... that meal, though, if her card just declined? <laughs> I really would like to know. You know why? Because she was going to pull out her other card at the grocery store. Oh, you're right. And that's when old girl was like. Oh, no, this just got sick. <laughs> they didn't have time. <laughs> so she had to pull out the card that had a couple of hundred dollars worth of credit on it so she could cover this fucking bill. And I love that they had hood rat shit playing. Because, because this that's was exactly hood rat what shit. the fuck this is. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I wanted this next scene, friend. I wanted it to be real so bad. I thought it was. I knew it wasn't. Come on, girl. You know Issa ain't going to bust nobody over the head with a painting. When she found them bitches and ran up on them. And said, how many points is that, bitch? (laughs) What's up, (laughs) Kizzy? And when Dana was like, what's wrong with you? She said, African, bitch. (laughs) I loved it. I wanted it to be real so bad, friend. I was devastated when it wasn't. Fantasy. (laughs) Oh, man. In real life, Issa is just staring at the girls till somebody honks behind her. Yeah, they walk off and she just looks so sad in this moment. Like, I've been trying to return the good vibes. I've been trying to take care of myself and nothing is going the way it's supposed to. And I was like, OK, well, just read my life then. Because- <laughs> but can we talk about how the girls were just casually strolling? How do you do that to someone have- and then just walk down the block? Right. Y'all don't even have the courtesy to call a fucking lift. At least how a little gonna- a little light jog. They were in shook at all. <laughs> I don't right know. There. They was walking like they knew where, exactly where it was going. Bitch, the club is right up the street. I want her to beat their ass Mm-mm. so bad. But yeah, she gets a text from Koya talking about dating vendors, and she's just like, "Okay, no, not right this now. Is, <laughs> not I can't today. handle none of this." And so she picks up the phone, calls somebody, and asks if she can come over. Friend, who did you think she was talking to? You know, I thought it was Nathan. I kind of did too, but then I was like, "No, nah, they love to fuck with us." They too obvious to fuck with us. you're right. right too obvious <laughs> too obvious that it would be nathan it is tasha mack hey! I mean, <laughs> <laughs> tasha mack wendy raquel robinson is Issa's mama and she opens the door big hugs you gotta Aww. take them shoes off i'm reading stanley got me reading a book about japan listen so don't walk in here with them fucking converse on and we feet. know all about that in dirty ass new york okay don't be right. walking from the train to my house but in LA where people don't walk they like I don't know what you're talking about I've been in the car all day oh yeah I don't know about that I'm always (laughs) on the two train we can't relate but (laughs) Issa and her mom are talking about the block party and Issa has to remind her mama that she did not get an invite because she has told Issa multiple times that she do not like big ass crowds of black people (laughs) she don't like like no people she said it makes her itchy and I I felt seen I must say yeah so well damn there go Fran again relatable content there's more than five people in this room oh my energy this is a lot (laughs) I just feel so drained I don't know man (laughs) but girl it's a block party what you want Easter to do not have a crowd at the next one you're right you're right (laughs) but her mom is you know trying to talk to her asking her about how um the block party went offering her some gumbo and I guess when Issa's like she don't want no gumbo her mom was like yeah something's wrong she knew it immediately. Her yeah, face. She's like, nah, because you always want gumbo. So <laughs> come here. <laughs> and I love this because sometimes you really just do need a hug from that maternal figure in your life. It's true. That maternal yep. intuition, too. Like how she just knew it and was like, listen, just come lay on just my come bosom. Here. Oh, my baby is 30. I already know what's up. Right. Mm-hmm. Let mama and- make it better. We we know the face. 
And of course, Issa breaks down immediately, fully just sobbing because she has a lot to get out. Yeah, I love that she had that at least, you know, somewhere to release it. Right. And as much as I think Nathan is not super bad for her, he was not the one for this moment. Yeah, he ain't that. No, he ain't a mama hug. (laughs) (laughs) Nathan hug is going to lead to something else. (laughs) Relatable content. (laughs) Oh, my God, friend. So (laughs) Issa's, you know, she's struggling. She feels like she doesn't really know what she's supposed to do next. And her mom is giving her great advice. You know, you're at that age where you're entering a new season. And which we've been saying all season. It was clear that that was going to be the theme of the season. Yeah. You go through your newness. When you have that that growing up period, are the people that were with you before, are they going to make it with you to the other side? Who is there room? It, it does. Everybody cannot go with you. That was one of the things. Oh, my God. I can't believe I just remembered that. But when I first moved to New York, I was getting invited to like all these parties and stuff. And I was super overwhelmed. Now I'm just like, oh, girl, everybody was on them lists. But I was just <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, all these parties or whatever. And I had friends back home who were mad at me about it for reasons I couldn't explain. And my mama was like, girl, you got to understand that you can't take everybody with you. Oh, my like, God. But why were they that mad? Was right after I turned 30 for reasons nobody will ever right. understand. They like, just felt niggas, left behind. They didn't want to exactly. be left behind. Yeah. Like, damn, so you're going to go to New York and all of a sudden you go into parties with celebrities. Famous. Like, Famous. No, that's not it, girl. <laughs> everybody is at this fucking party, sis. But it's big for me. You know, <laughs> being from Oklahoma, I'm overwhelmed. And and sometimes everybody is not going to be able to grow with you. New that's levels, new point. devils, yeah. man. Correct. Correct. We all go Correct. through it. Right. So Issa, though, is doing something that I think a lot of us do, which is comparing herself to her mom at the same age, talking about how, you know, her mom had house and kids and all this. And she was like, yeah, but y'all was a fuck up. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> Child. I love, Lila I Issa, love the twice. honesty in this conversation. <laughs> she was like, yeah, but you made two mistakes. There's two of us. She was like, correct. Yeah. Exactly. Up twice. <laughs> <laughs> I love that though, because as mortifying as it is to hear, right? I'm sure it was kind of a relief too to know, like, yeah, we're all, regardless of the age where you're at, we're all just trying to figure this shit out. Right. I mean, because I that really would have hurt my feelings for mom to be like, Girl, yeah, it was a whole mistake. Girl, you but- were not planned, even though I know I wasn't. But it's nice to think <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> she makes sure to say that Issa and Amal are the best parts of her life. And oh. Just like she figured it out, Issa will figure it out, too. And Issa has the benefit of no fuck ups who are dependent. <laughs> So, <laughs> I mean, you know, got to focus on little things. Since you're calling your kids fuck ups now is all I'm saying. But. <laughs> <laughs> Issa also has another kind of issue with her mom where she overheard her saying something one time and never brought it up to her. And so it has been something that has stuck with her ever since when she asked her mom, you know, do you remember when we were at Aunt May's anniversary or whatever? And you told her that I had my hand in too many pots. And it's clear that Issa has been carrying her, carrying that with her. Like, damn, my own mama think I'm involved in too much and I'm flighty and I can't stick to nothing. And damn, you know, I'm all over the place. And she's like, girl, I meant that you are into a lot of things and you're super good at them. And I admire you, Issa. Yo, hearing I oh, admire man. you from your mom's huge huge <laughs> especially thinking her mom a was black girl yeah and especially thinking her mom was saying like that she's a mess she's just doing right. too much and nothing at all but in reality her mom was actually really proud of her yeah that is exactly what Issa needed to hear a breakthrough yeah that she just suddenly feels a lot better thankfully she's asking her mama about stanley who you know he's doing very right by her don't get it twisted i mean <laughs> mom couldn't stop moaning and smiling on oh, that couch no. mama don't nobody need to hear please. that. please nobody please needs to hear that but i love that at the end of this scene we saw where Issa and amal get their hatred for twins from because <laughs> keisha alopecia get it right <laughs> Lila will not marry that man because she do not want nothing to do with them fucking twins. <laughs> <laughs> they had to get this shit from somewhere. Had to. <laughs> so Issa is on the sidewalk when Kelly calls and I guess she is fed the fuck up. You know, she's been trying to get through to Issa. I mean, it's been days, right? Like, what's going on? 
and then answer the phone talking about hello this is kelly man ask who's calling it's like bitch you called he said me. it was like you called me <laughs> what fuck is you talking about girl but you know Kelly is asking Issa about the whole Molly situation. Have you reached out to her? And of course, Issa hasn't because Molly ain't called her too valid. Right. And um, Kelly makes a super good point here, which is that the two of them could really work it out if they just sat down and had an honest conversation. I mean, it's what you and I have been saying all season long. Where you been? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I've just been busy. Okay, well, have you called Molly yet? Uh Uh-uh. Why not? Because she hasn't called me. So that's it? That's a wrap? Issa, come on. I know you're upset right now, but maybe if y'all sat down and talked face to face, you could work it out. Are you giving Molly the same energy? Yes, I've been calling that bitch too. Look, when me and Tiff let our shit sit too long, we almost didn't come back from it. I just don't want to be the one to reach out this time. Right. And if I am Issa and anytime I have a disagreement with my best friend, I'm the first one to reach out. You know, I am going to get tired of that eventually. Yeah. I'm going to get tired of always being the one to try to fix our relationship. Do you not care enough to fix it? And people get comfortable, too. You know, people get comfortable with you always being the initiator. and You almost enable that kind of dynamic. So there's a point where you're going to have to cut that shit off. Exactly. But Kelly says, yes, bitch, I've been blowing that bitch's phone up as well because this is crazy. (laughs) And when me and Tiff was going through it, had we just let shit fester, it could have been, you know, something we couldn't have come back from. Our relationship could have been permanently fucked up. Over nothing. to y'all. Over nothing. Child. And so Kelly is like, so if Molly never calls, y'all just ain't never gonna talk again? And Issa's like... Next scene. (laughs) like yeah unfortunately i said what the fuck i said Mm. and i'm tired of always being the one to fix it nothing else to say but ooh, this is rough yeah Issa returns home um from this quite eventful day and i just love that she's coming back to a nice clean apartment because that is one of the best feelings Uh, on earth especially when you're already like low-key not feeling too great Right. And you you get to just walk through your clean house. Oh, and it go smells take a shower. fresh. Yes. Oh, and I love how oh. she put on her cozy bay clothes. You know I'm the queen of that. You are. I said, <laughs> these clothes don't belong to Issa. But... <laughs> it's a collection of exes. You know everyone has them shorts and shirts and hoodies. She was cleaning up in some nigga's shorts earlier. Those are not yours. <laughs> I have a drawer full of it. It's my loungewear. <laughs> I know... <laughs> <laughs> I love that we can see a sign that Issa has on the wall that says, little girl, be fair, show yourself some care, which is... I need that, first of all. Yes, Issa, it's... real life Issa, I need that. <laughs> Framed, please. Please have them ship that to friends. <laughs> please. But yeah. She's smoking a blunt and back on Facebook, and there's just more love coming in for the block party all day long. I love this. And this is what yes. happens when you're doing what you want. Shit just starts aligning. Uh, you can see I her was in say alignment. Yes, you see her in <laughs> flow. Like she did something she loved and it was well received. That's the best combination. Right. And so when people are asking, you know, where can we get something else like this? Issa's like, bitch, hold tight because it's coming soon. You saw her face. It was like a light bulb went off. Like she's like, wait a minute. This is my thing. Like, this is my thing. She felt super encouraged in that moment. You know, she's happy now. Today was crazy. It was all over the place. But she talked to her mama. She got the peace she needed. Right. She came home to a clean house. So she didn't have that shit to stress her out. And now she's feeling even better about like what she's doing professionally. So she's dancing her way into the kitchen. But, you know, she went in that fresh, clean icebox and remembered that she ain't got nothing in there to eat. It is nothing in there. Girl. <laughs> Sriracha and mustard. That's it. You don't have nothing to eat. In Relatable content. <laughs> Friends like, yeah, I order out every day. I'm just going to order out. I just, you know. <laughs> Fran can't take the quarantine and like having to cook for herself. Yeah, no, it hasn't been fun. <laughs> like another pot, another plate. Oh my plate. god! Oh my god! The kitchen gets dirty. <laughs> so Issa is placing a pickup order for Ethiopian food, but when she gets to the restaurant, who does she see inside sitting at the bar? The god last motherfucker she wants to see. 
Molly is there and, you know, looking cute. She's dressed, smiling, looking at her phone. And so immediately Issa freezes. You know, she was giving, she was doing some ridiculous little rhyme that wasn't really working out. But <laughs> she lets that go instantly. And when she turns to, you know, check in with reflection mirror, bitch, that girl is gone. Okay, she clocked out. She's high. She's asleep. She's gone. I'm kind of wondering if this has to do with this new season thing. Like, what if Mirror Girl is no longer a part of that? And it's like, time for you to make your own decisions, girl. Oh, no. Mirror Bitch is you. She'll never be gone. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of Don't like, look to me, yeah, girl. It's kind of like, I think Mirror Bitch thinks she's the real Issa. And <laughs> Issa is her inner child. <laughs> Or just her ego flaring up. Right, I always got to come back over here and take care of your ass. (laughs) I don't think Mirror Bitch is gone permanently, but maybe. Maybe it's like, girl, you're at a new place. Time to grow up. Time to grow up and stop talking to yourself in the goddamn mirror. Right. (laughs) We'll see if we hear from my fave again um, Mm. this season. But we see her kind of going back and forth internally about whether to go inside. She's hesitating, but ultimately turns away and gets back in the car like girl I will find something else to eat it's Los Angeles what did and you that's think that's where we end what did you think six. did you think she was gonna go in when she saw that Molly was there yes and I thought she was gonna go in go to the bar be like yeah pick up for D stop and it I did and and fucking pay for her shit and leave stop it Chris <laughs> so that's even worse and no. act like Molly's not sitting right there I mean <laughs> but you know I'm mad at you you know I'm mad at you you know you mad at me unrelatable and- content <laughs> <laughs> although I really do think Issa and Molly need to talk I don't think the next day is the time for it I mean yeah which is why I kind of knew she was gonna be like "Ooh, no yeah. and just walk back to the car because too True. soon number one and she's high as balls and hungry yeah. and now's not really the time Right. I definitely thought she was, you know, I thought she wanted that Ethiopian food more than she did. I mean, <laughs> I, I get it. I love Ethiopian <laughs> food. Fran, guess what Fran would have done? <laughs> I would have hollered like, at yeah, someone on the Jared. street like, yo, I will pay you five <laughs> bucks if you go in there and get my <laughs> Go food. in and get it for me. <laughs> <laughs> and when he says, oh, yeah, I'm picking up an order for Hey, Francesca, <laughs> Hey. <laughs> You're right, Molly. Be like, Molly be like, uh. Meanwhile, what you're the standing fuck? outside in the glass, looking in like, like it's not ass. me. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see me here. <laughs> oh my God! Do you think Molly saw Issa there though? I think she out? saw her. I do. I I feel like you know they always leave us with a cliffhanger. I feel like she True. happened to turn right when Issa was getting in the car. You know it's something. I'm waiting on yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know. I can't call it. We just going to have to tune in and see. I, I feel like she didn't, but maybe because you just never know where this they show just, is going to They just think going to add the fuel to the fire. You know it. She saw yeah, it. So I, I think the conflict between Issa and Molly is going to be um, the majority of what takes us through the rest of the season. But that like hurts I said before, heart. you see Issa and Nathan getting closer, which means Lawrence is trifling ass can not be far behind. Oh, I mean, I love a triangle. He is going to pop up. I love a triangle. I'm here for it. (laughs) But I am sad. (laughs) I mean, hey, you know, it's a little little fun to life. What are we here for? No, but I do feel bad (laughs) about Molly and Issa because you know how there are seasons, like we were saying earlier, you don't know which friends you can bring along. But Mm -hmm. also... There are ebbs and flows. There's times where things just, you're just not seeing eye to eye. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's someone that you should remove yourself from. So I'm kind of wondering which route they're going to take it in. Is this irreparable or irreconcilable differences? Or is just a a season where it's just like, listen, life, our lives are just taking us in different places and we'll come back around at some point. Oh, which makes me think maybe it won't be that she and Andrew get closer and that's what pushes her back to Issa. Maybe they'll have a breakup. I mean, it's Molly, so. <laughs> oh, no, damn, <laughs> you acted like Issa. <laughs> oh, that was mean. Oh, my God, I take it back. <laughs> uh, but I don't. I think you might be right. But I also really, I see it for Molly and Andrew. I think they're going to work. They're so cute. He's so patient. They are cute together, right. And they seem to really click with each other. So Their vulnerabilities work well together. So I think that they might work. <sighs> yeah. Shout out to Yvonne. I know she's tired of y'all dumbasses tagging her. I saw her, her like post a meme where she was like, mm-hmm. 
All of y'all. All of y'all. <laughs> it's been killing her all y'all, season. Y'all, please leave Yvonne Orgy alone. She is not Molly. Also talking to Issa as if she is Issa D. Please do not. There's a character. Ah, oh, my goodness. But make sure you tune in Insecure Sunday nights, 10 p.m. on HBO so we can see how the rest of the season unfolds. Any predictions? Shit Anything else? is crazy. You know, I, I really can't. I don't have anything like clear from here on out other than Lawrence is going to pop up and it will fuck up something between her and Nathan. Yo, do you think Daniel is going to pop up? <sighs> Damn. I mean, I want to say no, but it is Issa. And it's fi- all it's kind of insecure shit. <laughs> is all they do to us. He's going to oh pop God. up. Issa might lose her job because she's been slacking on the apartment manager shit. Oh and my so God, she that's the last thing she again. needs with <laughs> right, this cute ass crib. Job, she loses her place. <laughs> oh God. So, maybe, so maybe Daniel does pop up. Although now that Lawrence is single and got a job, <laughs> you can go be a bum on his couch for two years like he was a bum on yours. Oh my God, he can pay rent now. <laughs> this is great yeah bars in hell but yeah we're gonna gonna have to see girl i don't know anything specific for you no i mean can't wait to see latoya and andrew finally reunite not um you know maybe george is their dad i mean there's just so many places we can go okay all right. Well, that means it's time to wrap it up. Friends getting crazy. Leave us predi- like, leave us y'all. your conspiracy theories. I'm reading them all. I'm reading them all. Hashtag I N S E C U R I T E A. Yes, use the hashtag. Connect with us on social media. Let us know your predictions and what you thought of the episode. But until next week, I'm Crystal. And I'm Hey Friend. Hey. And yeah, we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Insecurity, the Insecure After Show is a Loudspeaker Studios production in association with Team Epiphany. We're your hosts, Crystal and Fran, our producers, Matt Raz. The executive producers are Chris Morrow and Matt Raz. Our associate producer is Tyrell Worley, and the show is engineered and edited by Dwayne Crawford. Thanks, everybody. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs>